Since the dawn of time, humans have tried to figure out what weapons work best together, and Hunt Showdown is no different. I've seen a lot of new players struggle with the concept of a balanced loadout in Hunt, and I think that comes down to experience, which is okay because naturally, it'll get easier the more you play. This guide is just meant to help you consider a few things while also being short and sweet. It's not exhaustive, but hopefully it will help you. So let's talk about the things I think every player should consider when making a loadout. Number one is cost. Cost is an obvious one. You should probably pick a loadout you can afford to lose. If you have exactly $1,500 in your bank account, bringing a Nitro might not be the most effective loadout you could get for that money. So if you wanna shop around, go to the Arsenal tab and click this button to sort by price. If you want something very cheap, the Winfield and the Springfield are good picks, cost effective, and unlock early. If you do take a cheap loadout and you manage to score a kill, you can always loot more expensive weapons off of those bodies. And of course, if you wanna pay close to nothing, you can recruit a free hunter and make that loadout work, but you might want a med kit. Number two is range. Range is a tricky one because you don't always get to choose the range where you have a gunfight, but if you tailor a loadout to a certain range, you can then make decisions in game to make that work. Range is also closely tied to damage drop off, which we will talk about. So for example, if you take the Caldwell rival or a bow, these weapons are most effective within about 20 meters where there's still room to close a gap. But that means you can be vulnerable to attack beyond that distance. So you may wanna bring a secondary that has more range like a medium or long ammo pistol, which has less damage drop off than a compact one. If you are taking a two slot weapon like the bow, you could take another two slot weapon like the Winfield Vandal. I'll leave this graph up for a second. It's not exactly up to date and doesn't reflect the custom ammo options, but the lessons you can draw from it remain true, like compact ammo has worse damage drop off than medium. If you do take a loadout with limited range, movement traits, or a stamina shot might be good additions for your loadout. Number three, symmetry. Symmetry is another abstract idea, but like I said in the beginning, it's easier to identify with experience and it usually comes down to fire rate or range. Some weapons have a high enough fire rate and general effectiveness that it doesn't really matter what secondary you bring. Weapons like the Winfield, the Vetterly, and the Labelle can just keep shooting and you usually don't have to switch to your pistol to finish a kill. However, other weapons like these Sparks have a 4 second -ish reload, which means in most situations you'll need to switch to your pistol to get that kill if the first shot doesn't do it outright. But that also means you probably don't want a Romero or Sparks pistol in your secondary because after those two shots you'll need time to reload both guns. Or if you have a sniper scope that is okay for range but it may be hard to use up close, so you'll want a secondary weapon that is sufficient on its own in close range like the Spitfire. So symmetry is about how much you'll lean on just one weapon or equal parts of both depending on the situation and you'll find which one you are more comfortable with. There's no proper way to play in the post quick swap world. Number four, ammo. Ammo is the easiest to understand, I think. Generally, compact and medium ammo have better ammo economy, long and special have worse. That means when you hit a resupply box, you won't get as many long bullets as you would compact bullets. Also, special ammo boxes are fewer than normal ones. Each resupply has three red ammo boxes and only one special. Some weapons like the Labelle and the Mosin just don't have that much ammo, sitting at 15 total. That's not critically low, but it can be a problem so if you have a weapon that doesn't get much ammo from a resupply and doesn't have a lot of ammo to begin with, you can take a secondary with the same ammo type that will boost your spare ammo pool. If you take a labelle and an uppercut, you can boost your spare ammo to 14. It takes the back number from both and adds them together. If you find yourself running out of ammo pretty often, consider taking a secondary with the same ammo type to have more wiggle room or factor the price of an ammo box into your loadout. Also, when you share ammo types, you loot more ammo from boxes, which is great, and this has never been a concern for weapon balance ever. It's also worth considering that some ammo types have more penetration power than others. Long ammo can penetrate more walls and do more damage after than compact can. Number five, utility. Utility is also related to ammo. Some ammo types can make navigating the world easier, so a Nagant silencer with poison ammo takes care of most AI. Incendiary ammo is great against bosses like the spider and assassin. Some weapons also have variants with more utility. This repost can hack and slash grunts and hunters, 
and open up a melee slot in your toolbar for something else. The hand crossbow isn't the best for PvP, but it is mostly silent and has custom bolts that can remove obstacles in the world. So in general, the more situations your loadout can be used in, the more utility it has. Number six, traits. Traits can make some weapons better. The wind field is good on its own, but with levering, it's great. Well, actually it's great either way, but you get the point. If you recruited a legendary hunter, they come with three random traits, and sometimes one or multiple of those traits apply to certain weapons. Quartermaster might mean taking a full shotgun and medium rifle could work. Iron Sharpshooter might make a bolt action more tempting than a single shot weapon. And Fanning can transform these single action pistols into SMGs. So when you recruit a hunter, pay attention to what traits they have and it just might benefit your loadout. If you aren't sure if your trait applies, you can search it in the roster menu search bar like so. Last one, fun is the real aim here, but you get to define what that looks like for you. If you find really competitive PvP as the most enjoyable, go polish off that Mosin. If you enjoy the triumph of making an impractical loadout work, make a meme loadout. Two combat axes isn't that practical, but you got this. And experimentation is part of the fun, so mix and match, loot weapons, get kills. The variety of Hunt's arsenal is really a selling point of the game. Anyway, that's it for my loadout considerations. I know I didn't get to equipment or consumables, but that's probably better as a different video. Subscribe if you enjoyed the video, leave your loadout considerations below, and until the next one, goodbye.